Thank you so much for joining me. Get comfortable, get your knitting, get something to drink and chill and relax because I have a lot of things to cover. Hello everyone, welcome back to Love of Fibers. I'm Liz and on this channel, I talk about all things knitting, sometimes a little crocheting and sewing. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to subscribe and like and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my future content. So let's start with what I'm wearing today. I am wearing my finished Audrey top, which is a pattern from Petite Knit that she released for the summer. And I believe I casted this on like at the end of August, I wanna say. And it was a pretty quick knit and I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised because it's a bottom up pattern. I usually don't choose bottom up patterns. And I ended up just kind of buying it because I liked it, but I, I didn't know it was bottom up. Anyway, it ended up being a really fun knit, super easy, super quick. I believe anyone can do it, even if you're like beginner and a beginner knitter. And basically, it's just you cast on for like the bottom. There's no ribbing or anything. So you basically, when you cast on and that, that cast on is going to be the, um, it's going to be kind of like the end of your, of your tank top. And so I cast it on a long tail cast on and it was pretty, I made sure it was pretty neat since that was going to be the finishings for the top. And then you knit up the body and basically the front panel and the back panel are worked separately and you put the back stitches to rest, the front panel, you work your front panel, start shaping. You also bind off for the underarm. And when you bind off, also this, the finishing is also just a simple bind off. And when you bind off, you're going to leave the, um, you're going to leave the stitches. For, I believe it's four stitches at the end of each end um, to work the I-cord straps. And then once you do that, you then pick up your stitches for the back. You work your back and then you do the eye cords and then you attach them obviously you know you put on the shirt you have to try it on see you know where you the length that you want make sure that you know you have enough give but not too much and then just pretty much um it's a kitchener stitch to attach the strap to the to the back panel um, everything as far as, you know, the process and how I knit it up was great. The yarn that I used was fantastic. I really love it. I would recommend it. It was the first time I used it. It's Lime Brand Cotton Bamboo, which is a 50-50. And it's from like their Lime Brand collection. So you can only buy it online. And it's really beautiful. I love the fabric, the drape, everything really pretty. The yarn was super nice to work with, no splitting. I'm really happy with the end result. The fabric is really, really beautiful. As far as the finishings, like I said, there's no ribbing. So as you work, it curls up a little bit, but once you block it, it's it's beautiful. There's no curling or nothing of the bottom edge. And I'll put pictures of the shirt, you know, of the tank top, and I'll put a video of me showing you guys what it looks like. Just, just is easier than me standing up and trying to like show you in this frame, you know? So I'll put pictures and I'll put a video so you can see, but the tank top is super pretty, super comfortable. I love it. And the cool thing is that you can totally keep wearing it. Like now for the fall, I can layer it, as you see, I'm wearing it here with just a button down shirt. You can put it, you know, with a cardigan. You can totally keep using it all through fall and even like, you know, spring, summer. So I think it's a great piece to add to your, to your knitted um, collection. And um, the only thing that I didn't really care for was the way the I-cord straps were attached to the, um, to the back panel. It was kind of finicky because, you know, I, you're basically, you're binding off the back. So now you're working with like, you have live stitches in a bind off. And I didn't really care for that. So if I were to do this again, and again, this is me kind of like just brainstorming. It could be that it doesn't work and I have to go back to the, you know, to the way I, I, I attach these straps, but I think that I definitely want to make this again next summer and maybe like, you know, just a different yarn, different colors, 
just to try different things because I really like it. I would actually, the same way that I did the front where you leave um, some live stitches, I would do the same for the back panel. So that way when I finish the eye cord and I go to attach, I'm working, you know, I, it's easier for me to, to seam that together from, you know, live stitches to live stitches, I think. And I would try that next time that I do this pattern. But overall, love it, simple, easy, fun, completely addicting because it's super, super quick to knit up. I will definitely knit up some more next summer and I love it. And all the details are on my Ravelry project page if you guys are interested and need more information. If you have any questions, leave your comments and I'll answer them. Let's move right into whip. I am loving all of them. All these whips are from my fall knitting plans, things that I really wanted to knit over the fall. So my first whip is the Sunday socks from Petite Knit and these socks I love. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that I casted these on. You also saw, you know, a piece of it done. Look how beautiful you guys. This is, like I said, Sunday socks from Petite Knit. I finished one sock and the other one is halfway. I, I did the entire leg, so I just have to do this piece. But this, I am so in love because I, I love knitting socks, but I love knitting socks in DK weight. That's my favorite. And I love two by two rip. Like that's my favorite, favorite type of socks to knit up. I think that they're so cozy and, you know, squishy and they have a really beautiful fit to your foot. And during like the, you know, I love wearing socks at home. And these are great to wear now in the fall with your Burks. You can wear them with boots. You can just kind of have them in the house, you know, on, on cold evenings. And so that's why I love DK Way socks. And this pattern, it's fantastic. I would totally recommend it. It's easy, very clear, the instructions, and it's up really quickly. So I'm gonna stay behind so I can focus on the sock, but look how beautiful, you guys. I am so in love. And I haven't even blocked this yet or anything. And look how beautiful. This yarn is a yarn that was gifted to me by my daughter. And it's, I believe it is, oh my God, I'm so bad. I, I think I have the label. Hold on, let me get it for you guys to show you. Oh, and then in here, you remember my little box pouch that I made that I love. It's so great to carry socks. So it's perfect. Let me see. I believe I have the paper in here. Yes, I do. I believe I mentioned this yarn before. This is, again, like I said, my daughter gave this to me as a gift. I believe Mother's Day. It's Simplicity by Haiku. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And it is 55% Merino Superwash, 28% acrylic, and 17% nylon. And this, the color is 951, which is, it doesn't even have a color, but I mean like a name, but it's 951 if you're interested. And it's just gorgeous. It's, uh, it's you know, it's this beautiful blue with a little bit of like a lighter blue in it. And you can see it, you know, through the ribbing. And it's so pretty. So this is, this is my first whip and kind of half finished object because... I have one sock that it's, you know, that it's done. And then the second one, I have it here. So this is the leg. It's a focusing yet is. This is the leg. And soon I'm gonna, you know, I think I need to knit up a little bit more of the leg. And then I can start working my heel and the rest. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait to finish these because they're so squishy. And nice, I just love, love, love this yarn. I would totally buy more of this yarn for socks. And it's cool because, you know, you can kind of machine wash them, which is nice also. And here's the, what I have left of the little cake that I am um, working on. Let me see if I focus this in. Yep, look how pretty, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? So that's, you know, the... That's the rest of my little cake for the rest of my other sock. 
and I cannot wait to finish these because I love them. And I am going to make more of this pattern. What a quick knit these socks are. I'm using, I believe, a four, yeah, four millimeter needle. And I'm using my tiny circulars, which I love, which I've spoken about them before. I love these. So I have a few in different sizes. And this is fantastic. What a game changer. I used to do my socks with DPNs and oh my goodness, so much faster, so much easier, you know, no fiddling with all these needles. Also, I hated the fact that it always would leave like this weird, I don't know, like this weird little gap. Eventually it closes up because it's just while you have all the DPNs on and I like the magic loop does that as well. That's why I don't really care for them. It's just like a temporary thing. It doesn't stay that way. I just, I don't really care for it. Um, so the mini circulars, these tiny circulars are great and they're a great investment. They're not cheap. So they're maybe like, I don't know, like $10 each, but they're so worth it. And I love knitting socks on them or like, even like your, like your mittens or fingerless gloves. Great for this. I did my penny gloves with these fantastic and um yeah and so like i said a quick workup four millimeter dk weight dot two by two rib i love two by two ribs so if you're you know if you're into that if you like it definitely go for it because you won't regret it and i'm definitely gonna knit up a few more because i what a quick knit and gorgeous 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 let me just gonna hang them here so that's my first whip my second whip is the friend to friend shrug and this is from leslie front from a friend to knit with i love her podcast and i love all the things that she knits up and i also love her like her taste in colors so if you guys don't watch her podcast definitely go check it out it's really great i love it anyway so she had released this pattern friend to friend shrug and I had wanted I saved it right away and I wanted to give it a you know give it a go it looked really cool and easy and simple and I feel like shrugs are such a great piece to have during fall because you know it's still really nice but sometimes like in early in the mornings or in the evenings it gets cool so this is something nice to just have in your tote and that if you get a little cold you can kind of just take it out and throw it on so I wanted to, you know, make one. And she recommends for this um, Hue and Me, which is Lime Brand, I believe. Let me see, I have one here, yep. It's from Two, two of Wands, Hue and Me, and it's Lime Brand. And this color is, mm, what color is this? Let me see. Give me one second. This is ozone. It's really beautiful. It's like a bluish, like a bluish gray color. Really light, really beautiful. I wanted to make this, and this is the yarn that she recommends. This is, by the way, this is 100% acrylic. She recommends this just because, you know, it's very practical. She said it holds up really well for the shrug. Um, you know, easy to maintain, to wash. You don't have to really, it's not delicate. You don't have to worry about it if you throw it in your tote or anything like that. I've never used this, so it's it's nice. It's soft. It's squishy. I like it. And this color is beautiful. And I actually bought this yarn. It was like on clearance at Joann's. So I ended up paying like $2 or $2.50 per bowl. Like, you can't beat that. The pattern calls for 2 two bowls of you and me for my size and um yeah so that worked out it was like like again like 250 so five dollars for this and it's really beautiful the color i really love it i don't you know let me see if the if the camera yep the camera focus look how pretty you guys it's really nice i love it and it's really soft so anyway i like i said i wanted to kind of you know try making it and it's super easy and it knits up really fast because the the needles you know pretty big needles 
I am using eight millimeter needles. So, and this is considered, I believe, a bulky weight. I love the detail here on the side. So on each side, you're gonna have that detail. It's so pretty. And then it just has like a really pretty little two by two ribbing. And the rest is stacking in until you get to the top. Just a fun, easy, quick knit. And the yarn, it's nice, it's really nice. It's my first time using it. So, so far, so good. The only thing that I did notice was that I don't usually knit with like 100% acrylic. And my hands, like when I was knitting this up, my hands were getting very tired. And I, you know, I could, I had to like put it on the side. So I only knit on it for a little bit. And then I kind of put it on the side because of that. My hands get tired. I don't know if it's because it's 100% acrylic or because it's bulky weight. Probably because it's bulky weight and, and I don't really knit with bulky weight. So that's probably the case. And again, my whips are all suffering because I am doing a test knit and it's a very tight deadline. And so I had to kind of stop everything that I was doing when I got this test knit so I can just focus on the test knit and get it done because the time frame was so, so tight. So I couldn't work on my, you know, my whips. But as soon as I'm done with this test knit, I can kind of get back to my whips because this is super cute and I want to have it ready now for fall. All right, so my next whip. This is a whip that I had been dying to cast on. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw the first pictures that the designer shared on their Instagram account. And before even pattern pattern release, I was obsessed. And as soon as pattern released, I saved it. I purchased it. Then I went and looked for yarn for it. And you guys, I like obsessed with this pattern. This is, let me get my whip. This is the Salty Day, Salty Days sweater from Kutoba Kika. And you guys know I'm completely obsessed with her and everything that she knits and everything that she designs. I my queue is like growing and growing and growing and I want to knit all the things so let me just show you this so I cast it on I right away I couldn't stop because the details are so beautiful and I made the entire back yoke and then I got the test knit so then everything had to stop I don't know how well the camera will show you guys this but it's just gorgeous so this is the back yoke of the sweater hopefully the camera is focusing on it and you guys can see it let me just see hold on let's see if it if not i'm gonna put pictures for you guys so you guys can appreciate the details on this let's see if i can get it okay there I'll try not to like move. So look how pretty this is. This back yoke is gorgeous. The color that I'm using in the yarn, I am in love with. It's DK weight. So I'm holding two strands together. It's uh, DK weight and then mohair. And it's just gorgeous, fluffy, soft, squishy, beautiful halo. Fantastic. And I, you know, I had to stay behind the camera. So I don't really know what you guys can see or not, you know, once I edit, I'll, I'll see. Hopefully it captured something, but like I said, I'll put pictures so you can see it better. And it is so beautiful, the detail. Oh my goodness, I am so in love with this. Look at that, look at that, so pretty. Oh, there, okay. So I'm not gonna move it, but look how pretty. So basically it just goes, you know, down and stuff. All the, the detail, it's gorgeous. This beautiful sweater that I am dying to get back to, I cannot wait to, you know, be able to sit and work on it as soon as I'm done with my test knit. And let me show you the yarn combination. This that I'm using, it's, this is my DK weight. And this is my mohair. Look how pretty, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I'm so in love. And... I have them here waiting for me in my little uh, 
in my little crochet little yarn bowl that I made with scraps which comes in so handy and this I believe oh, I'm so bad I didn't grab um oh I didn't grab for you guys any details for this yarn um okay so I'll put everything on in the description below and also in my project page on Ravelry is all the details for all the yarn because I didn't grab like you know a ball with the with the tags or anything like that and I don't have them here with me but this I believe is like universal yarn Bella cash I want to say DK oh it's so soft um and this is mm, I don't want I don't remember I don't remember you guys I will put everything in the description below and my project page has all the information for both yarns again it creates such a beautiful fabric and i oh i am so in love with this this is so pretty i cannot wait to have this sweater and wear it this is obviously not the front this is the back yoke but i just love it so much i love all of these beautiful beautiful details and it's okay let's talk about the pattern because i'm i can go on and on about every little detail on this on this piece that I that I made okay so the pattern the pattern is I don't know like 20 pages long and it's super detailed so well written and now the thing is I wouldn't recommend this pattern for like a beginner knitter because it's just a lot and definitely you can make it but just like hold it in your queue for when you feel you know really comfortable just reading charts and and just kind of following everything to detail and step by step so this pattern when I sat with it you know I made sure I had enough time to sit quietly to concentrate to go line by line and follow the chart because one stitch that you miss it will you know throw off the entire the entire um, design so definitely a pattern that you need to say and you know and follow along and you know and make sure that you're not distracted or anything like that now the other thing is that it's completely addicting so make sure you have enough time so when you say you can continue working this piece you guys i cast it on and i worked this entire piece in one sitting really quickly i couldn't stop i just wanted to see how it would turn out and if I had not gotten that test knit, I would have done, I would have been done with this sweater because it's addicting and it's gorgeous. So I, this is a pattern that I would totally recommend anyone that wants to make it. I honestly, I haven't even finished this one and I'm already like thinking of all the different colors that I want to knit this one up in. Like, I would love another one with no mohair, just DK weight, maybe like in a gray color or like a chocolate. I would love that. And there's actually a video. She did a tutorial for this sweater also. And I'll link all that below just in case anyone's interested. I watched it when she released it because I watch everything that she, I love her videos. But I haven't had to use it because the pattern is amazing. Like, you understand everything and you can follow easily so i haven't had an issue again you know I've, I've i've done lace before and i've knitted up a lot of different garments so i'm familiar with you know the terminology and everything that is required to do this so i'm very comfortable with the pattern if you are like a intermediate um obviously advanced knitter you know go for it if you're like truly truly beginner I'm not discouraging you definitely get it and save it and watch the video and then decide whether you feel confident to make it at that point you want to wait a little bit longer until you're really comfortable um to knit it up but definitely a gorgeous sweater that i think everybody should knit up again salty days sweater and i'll you know i'll put everything in the description below all right so my next whip and final whip is my test knit. okay you guys so I am so happy. I 
for a little bit, I kind of contemplated, you know, applying for test nits, but then I wasn't really sure. And then I was kind of, you know, doing my own things. And then I was like, you know, I'll wait around and see. So I ended up going for it, but obviously, you know, I love Katoba Kika. So I signed up for her um, test calls so I can get the emails on them. And she put out the test call for the cinema sweater, which was like, I, it's so funny. So I signed up like two days before she made that call. And then like, so that was like the first email that went out after I signed up. And so I got the email for the test call. I, I was like, oh my God, the cinema sweater. I've been like stalking it. She's been putting pictures. It's beautiful. I've been wanting just like an oversized everyday raglan sweater that you can just kind of throw on with everything. And so when she posted these pictures, I was like, oh my God, this is such a gorgeous raglan. Like I am definitely going to knit that up when she releases it. So anyway, she released, she put out the test code for it. I said, oh my God, I'm going to apply. I applied and I ended up getting it. And so the only thing is that the, the deadline was super, super tight. I believe like only three weeks for this raglan, which is fine because it's, you know, it's just a classic raglan. There's no like, there's no lace. There's no, you know, nothing very like intricate. But still, at the end of the day, it's still, you know, a raglan. It's a full on sweater. It's oversized. So it's bigger, more yarn. And, you know, you have a life, you do other things. So I had to stop all my whips. And I was like, okay, I just have to, you know, since I, I'm going to take the test knit. I have to like work on this exclusively. So let me show you. I have been, like I said, working on it, you know, right away as soon as I got the, the pattern and I'm almost done with it. Let me show you, hold on. Let me just untangle my yarn here. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw I posted some pictures, but it's coming out so gorgeous. I love it. So here is my cinema sweater my test knit. Let me see if you guys can see that. Oh, hold on. Let me just put it here again. Will it focus? Hold on. Yes. So cinema sweater. It's an oversized raglan. It's gorgeous. I love it. I am already done with obviously, you know, I did the collar. I already sewed the collar in. I did. I'm already, I did a full a full sleeve and my ribbing, my full sleeve. And then I have, I'm almost finishing my second sleeve. And so basically when I finish this sleeve, I'll probably finish it today. Once I finish, I have to do like one more decrease and then I can start my ribbing and my bind off on this sleeve. So I'm pretty much done. And then I'll continue doing the body. I only have a little bit more to do on the body. Um, I believe I have maybe like another six inches to knit up for the body. And then I can do my ribbing and bind off. I am in love with this sweater. I cannot wait to just like finish blockade and have it. I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of this sweater. I'm going to wear it with like pretty much everything. That's why I kind of decided to do a neutral color because I wanted it to just be able to wear with everything. This yarn is, what is it? Oh, Drops Lima. And this is the first time I work with this yarn. It's 50% wool, 50% alpaca. I love it. I am so in love with this yarn. I need to get more. And it knits up really beautiful. It's really soft. It's so fluffy. And this color is, I want to say... Chalk is the color for this, for this Drops Lima. I love it. It's so soft, so nice. I would definitely buy more. And I'm super, super excited. I was so happy to be selected for this. And this is my first test knit ever. So I was like, not only happy that it's my first test knit, but also, you know, that I got selected. But also that, how cool is that? That I, my first test knit is with Kotoba Kika, which you know, guys, I love her. So I was so, so happy to work on this knit for her. 
and I'm in love with this raglan and I cannot wait to finish it, to block it, to wear it. The color is just gorgeous and it just feels so fluffy and so good. Like you want to live in it and that's exactly what's going to be happening once I'm finished with this. The other thing is that two things that I did new to me for this pattern was that I usually, when I do a folded collar in the past, when I've done a folded collar, I do the folded collar and then I'll sew it in at the end when I'm done with my project. With this, with this raglan, what I did was because I was 100% sure that everything was perfect. You know, I swatched, I, I, everything was on point. I went ahead and I actually seamed it together before continuing. So I did it right with my needles and before continuing to do my yoke and my raglan increases, which was really great. I love doing that versus seaming it at the end. And I love this and I think I would use this all the time if I know for sure that I'm not going to have to have like an issue with the collar or anything like that. Because, I mean, to take this, like if you have a problem, to take this out, you pretty much have to like, I don't know, undo your whole sweater. <laughs> um, where when you, you know, when you see me, you, it's it's fine because you're, you have the cast, the cast on edge you, and you can do what, whatever you need to do. But anyway, I love this, you know, fold it down collar and seaming it and then continuing with the with the body. The other thing that I did for the first time that the pattern calls for is a pearl row. So you basically knit half of the of the rib, you do a pearl row and then you knit the other half and then, you know, so so basically what the pearl row does, it helps it have a nicer fold. I had never done that. Some people put the pearl row on the outside when they fold. I folded it that way and I didn't care for it. I didn't like those pearl bumps showing. So I did it the other way around. I folded it in so it's in the inside and I'm, I'm happy with that option. The other thing that I did that the pattern calls for is an Italian bind off. I had never done that. I usually have done other bind offs. So it was my first time and this is, I did it on this sleeve and at the beginning it was a little wonky, you know, but it ended up working out pretty nicely, I think. Um, you know, as I do it a little bit, it's hard to show, I guess, here on the, on the, in the camera but as I let me see yeah it's kind of hard to show you guys but it's pretty nice I'm assuming that as I as I do it more I'll get better at it and it'll be a nicer finish so it's really cool because it creates like let me see if I do this maybe you guys can see it better it's really cool because it looks like the um like the edge just kind of rolls over so you see how pretty it is? It's it's really nice. So I didn't do a bad job for my first time, actually. But I think that, you know, when I do my second sleeve and then my waist, um, definitely it'll be nicer, it'll be neater. But anyway, that was nice that I learned that. Like I said, I had never done an Italian bind off. So that was cool. And it's really easy, too. So this is my testing. And this is what's been taking all of my time, well, my spare time. And I haven't been able to work on any of my other whips, but I'm almost finished with this. Once I'm done with this, I can kind of start working on my other whips. I'll finish that sock and definitely going to dive in fully and completely to my sailor, to my um, Salty Days sweater. Let me see. Yeah. And then that's it for, for all my whips. One thing that I wanted to share is that when you gauge swatch, something that I learned through, through testing the cinema uh, sweater was that your needles matter when you gauge swatch. So if you're gonna gauge swatch with wood and you're gonna move up sizes, try to stick with wood because it actually changes the the sizes of the stitches. Like it changes your swatch, you know, metal and wood. Like it's so interesting. It actually creates completely different swatches. And I didn't think that. I thought like, oh, okay, you know, I have wood needles. I'm gauge swatching. I don't have this size in wood maybe. Let me just do the, the metal. And oh my God, it was completely different because then I tried wood needles again in that same size. And then I got, like I met gauge, right? 
So it was just interesting and that's something for me to keep in mind. So for example, I was doing a gauge swatch with a 4.5, right? And this 4.5 needle, I needed to me, let's assume 20 stitches, right? And I was getting 21 stitches. So then I went to a five millimeter needle, but metal, and I was still getting 20, 21 stitches or 21 and a half stitches, right? Which was insane. And I was like, okay, that makes no sense. So then I remembered that I had the five millimeter needle in wood, but they were somewhere like in another project. So I took them. And when I gauge swatched with those needles, I met gauge. I actually went down to, you know, the gauge that I needed. So it was just interesting to see that the material of the needle creates different swatches. So that's something to just keep in mind. And I just wanted to kind of share that and put it out there, you know, in case anybody, um, you know, when you're going to gauge swatch, if you can try to stick with the same material because it does affect your gauge, which is interesting. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. And yes, yeah, so I wanted to share that little, um, that little piece of uh, information. Let's move on to acquisitions. Okay, so you know how I told you that Joanna was having a huge sale? Lion Brand was also having a sale. So I was able to take advantage of the Lion Brand sale and on top of that, my Joanne's coupons, which was fantastic. So the Hue and Me was on clearance. So I bought those two, um, I got those two balls of the Ozone for the Friend to Friend Shrug. And it was so cheap. It was like $2.50 a ball, so like $5. $5. I also ended up getting, don't mind me because I have to bend down to get what I need to show you guys. I also got two more in this beautiful color. Let me see what color this is. Fatigue. That's funny. It's like a, like a moss green. And let me see if I can show you guys that color. Let me see. Let me see. It's really beautiful. It's like a moss green. So I ended up getting two bowls of this also um, to make another shrug. I had been wanting to try Patton's Classic Worsted and Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And I had heard great things about these yarns. They're 100% wool. They're sold at Joann's and Michael's, which you know that in those big box stores, you usually can't find 100% wool. So anyway, I had been wanting to try these yarns and Taylor from Wool Needle Hands, she brags about this, these two yarns and I love, you know, her ramble and her podcast. I always watch them. And so she, you know, she always recommends them and she's always saying that these are great yarns. So I was like, oh, I have to go, you know, check that out. They were having a huge sale. So I was like, let me go, especially that, you know, for fall and winter, I want to make some 100% wool knits so it's perfect and they have beautiful colors i picked up from Patton's classic worsted wool this 100 percent wool look at this color look how gorgeous this is oh i am in love and this is i believe this is called pumpkin but i will double check yes pumpkin look how beautiful this color i think this is so great for my skin Oh, I love it. It feels so nice and squishy and beautiful. And I am so happy to discover this yarn. Thank you to her, to Taylor. And I am definitely buying more of this yarn for my stash. And this goes for like $8.99 a bowl. But again, I had a coupon. So I ended up getting these for like, I want to say $5 and something cents which is fantastic. So I ended up getting four of these because I want to make a vest with this color. And I think this is going to be really great for that. And I also got, oh my God, this, look you guys, how beautiful this is. This is Lime Brand Fisherman's Wool. And again, this is 100% wool. This is natural, undyed. So look, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. Let me see if you guys can see that. Yep, look how pretty that is. So, so pretty. And it's really squishy and soft and nice. Mmm, smells so good. Well, like that nice, you know, woolly smell. And I bought 
enough of this to make like a cardigan. I want to make a really nice cardigan with this. And then the other one that I got that I love, love, love is this beautiful color. This is oatmeal. And let me see if I can um, get the camera to focus on that. Look how pretty that is. And with this, I want to make a vest, like a slipover with this color. And that way, you know, very neutral. I can kind of throw over everything. I think this is fantastic for that. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to, you know, go ahead and pick patterns for this and cast on, you know, I'm going to probably cast on as soon as I'm done with this um, test knit and definitely cast it on for this color because I am dying to cast on with this color, the slip over, you know, the vest. So yeah, so I don't have any vest. So I figured I'll make these two you know, to have in my, in my uh, collection. And I want to make one in like a charcoal gray, but I don't have that yarn. So I have to, maybe I'll get this because this has a beautiful charcoal that I saw. Um, this doesn't, this has like, they have these beautiful colors and there were some other brown ones that were really nice as well. So anyway, this is definitely a yarn that I will be purchasing every time there's sales to just stash because it's, I mean, oh my God, you guys, I didn't even tell you all, like all the specs, but okay. So this is a worsted weight yarn in this, you get 227 grams, which is a nice amount and you get 465 yards, which is also 425 meters. I mean, you get a lot of yardage in this. So these go for $13.99 and I got this for, it was 30% off. And then I had another like 50% off. I mean, it was like such a deal. I bought enough. I believe I bought, I bought two of these because two of these, I have enough for a vest. And then in this one, I bought like three, I believe three or four, three, I think, cause it's a lot to make that vest, to make, I'm sorry, to make that card again. So I have a queue where I've been kind of saving everything that I want to knit up. So I'm going to go through it and kind of select what I want to, you know, which cardigan I want to knit up with this and then the vest as well. Um, so anyway, that was my Lion Brand acquisition at Joann's and I'm in love with this. I want to order, you know, I want to go and buy some more different colors because definitely this, I love this yarn and look at the color. And this one has tons of colors. Like, like the fisherman's wool, I believe is only like maybe five or six different colors. This one, there's so many. So, you know, definitely buy. I want to get that charcoal to make um, another slip over vest in a charcoal. And then the other thing that I bought at Joann's, and this is for a gift. And it is Big Twist. They only carry it at Joann's. This is 100% acrylic. And so soft and pretty and squishy. And the reason I bought on sale, you guys, so cheap, like $2.89, I believe. Um, this is worsted. And this is the color Light Rose. And you get, how much do you get? You get 380 yards here, which is 347 meters. I bought two of these. And I am going to make with this a pattern that is... Um, it is from Leslie again, a uh, friend to knit with. And it's this beautiful like butterfly, butterfly stitch blanket. It's like, a, I would say like a crib size blanket. It's for like a child, for, you know, a baby or whatever. Um, and I am going to actually make this for a gift for uh, a baby. And yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, to make it and to, and to see how that turns out. Um, she recommends this yarn for it. So I just kind of went with it. She said it was very practical. She uses it all the time because she makes these blankets as gifts and gives them to, you know, new parents and they're easy to take care of. So I remember, you know, when I had my kids, you're like exhausted. You can't be worrying about using a blanket that's delicate or that, you know, oh my God, like, oh, it's going to get ruined or whatever. Babies like spit up and it's like a hot mess. And, you know, you're like exhausted. So 
obviously you want something that is very practical and easy to upkeep and this you can throw in the wash and Leslie said that you know she throws it in the wash she even even like dries it even though it says like do not dry and it's fine um in I saw her samples like the ones that she's made to gift and they're beautiful so I said let me go for it so I'm excited to cast on this little blanket and see it's such a pretty little blanket I would love to knit up a few um, to give us gifts during Christmas so we'll see and this is such an affordable yarn and it's nice too and it's soft and they have so many colors so I'll, I'll like I said I'll link everything you know on the description below so if you guys are interested in anything you know you can kind of go ahead and, and, and look into that as well so these are my acquisitions that I got from Joanne and oh such good buys you guys i am so in love with this i cannot wait to cast on let's see what else i love wool warehouse like love 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 them um they're in the uk and they were having a sale a while back for like drops and i love drops and i went ahead and bought some yarn for a project that i want to make and it's still here in the bag it's so cool you guys let me show you it's so nice how they package it because they send it to you like this look how beautiful and this gorgeous like organza bag i love it so anyway um they're fantastic so they're in the uk they carry tons of different brands shipping is like so fantastic you know always received everything no problem i ended up getting from them i've never used this yarn from drops this is drops merino extra fine it's so so soft and so squishy i love it and oh and by the way the patents worsted the patent classic worsted in the fisherman's wool those are 100 percent wool like non-super wash okay that just triggered my mind because i believe that this is super wash yes this is super wash treated the the merino extra fine from drops okay they have some i think some yeah they have some non-wash like the lima that I used for my test knit is, is non superwash. And I believe they have some others, but this is this is superwash. Anyway, um, I when I bought this actually, my intention wasn't to buy superwash, but I they were having a sale and I love the colors and I bought it. And then afterwards when I got it, that I read the label, I was like, oh man, I didn't want superwash, but it's okay you know I'll, I'll just be mindful of that just because superwash tends to grow you know when you wash it and stuff and over time it has more of a drape because it's treated and it doesn't have like any nylon or anything to give it like a little bit of strength you know so the options usually are you can hold it with like a mohair or strand of silk or something like that so that's something that i can consider but i'm not sure because I didn't really want to add any of that to this garment that I'm going to make with this, but we'll see. Anyway, it should be fine. I've, you know, I've knitted up with Superwash before and I'm just really mindful, like the way I, you know, I wash it and I, you know, and I take care of it. Anyway, um, but look, you guys, look how gorgeous this is. So I got this beautiful color. This is 09. It's like a dark brown this is 30 this is like a mustard yellow so pretty and let's see this one is um, 51 and this one is like um, like a tan like a beige yeah like a light brown maybe and then oh look at this one this one is 48 and this is this is like a like a mauve i guess like a very soft pink you know like maybe like an old-fashioned pink or something like that and this one is 
the 49 and this one is like I don't know like coffee maybe like a coffee color it's so pretty and then this one is 48 and oh, I love this one this one is like that beautiful wine color you know like reddish wine color so good and then this one is five and this one is a cream this is like an off-white cream color so basically this one i got enough for the like the, i'm doing the body in this and then these are the and then the other ones are like the accent colors so the bottom of the bag is just like tons of these but all the other ones that i showed you are the accent colors and this is gonna go for i want to make the stripe pipe sweater from katsoba kika i am obsessed with that pattern and i was like trying to like brainstorm like my colors i wanted to like be really fun but like something that i can kind of mix and match with everything that i own um and also like my favorite colors so this is right like my palette i think it's gonna be so beautiful so this is gonna be like the main body and then like i said my stripes are gonna be in these colors i can't i can't hold all of this i don't think but nope i'm not gonna be able to so you see i have like this pretty range of browns here right pretty range of browns and then i have these pretty ones it's like let me just put these back i can't hold all of these you guys nope and then i have these complement each other also as well yep look how pretty the other thing that i bought that i needed was i bought some mohair and i needed this for i already have the yarn i just needed the mohair and it's for a, a sweater that i want to make um and this color is i want to say let's see hold on this is zero four i think this is called like old pink on the website and it's it's really pretty let me see if it if it um focuses in here so nice yeah so i'm gonna hold this with a, a dk weight wool yarn for a sweater that's it for you know look you see that's the back it's like all the colors for the body are in there and then all my mohair and i love this little bag it's so cute so that's it for acquisitions for me and oh no no i'm not no it's not true i have more that i forgot to show you and I love this and I'm so excited about this one. So remember, I don't know, well, Sorella Yarns. Oh my God, I love their Insta account. I love all their yarns. And every time they've set like the pre-orders, I always forget and I always miss out. So she did a whole like collection, which was like the Eras collection for Taylor Swift. And this time I didn't miss the window. She also left it open a little bit longer, which was really nice. I ended up pre-ordering three and um, oh my God, you guys, it's gorgeous. So I, it was such a nice surprise. So at the beginning of September was my birthday and I, you know, you order, you pre-order and then you kind of forget about it, you know, cause it takes a cup, it takes a few weeks for them to, you know, do everything. And so the cool thing is that I got my package on my birthday. Like how freaking cool is that? amazing so i was so happy to get my yarn and look you guys look at this beautiful yarn that i got from the collection let me see if i can do this justice by you know at least holding it together here so you guys can see it look how pretty these colors are oh i'm so in love so i got i got this is let me see this is gold rush gold rush it's so pretty. Let me see if you can like see it. Yeah, there. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. It's so beautiful. It's so soft. This is 100% superwash merino wool. It's fingering weight, 400 yards. 
I also got folk folklore. Look how beautiful this is. It's like it's like a grayish, a light grayish, but I don't know. It has like a little bit of like a lavender in it. So like a lavender gray. I don't know. It's it's just gorgeous. And oh look at this beauty. This is Shake It Off. I'm obsessed with this one. Obsessed. So, so gorgeous. Oh my God, I love this one. And it's so soft, so pretty. And I ended up buying these three. And oh my God, the entire collection was amazing. I wish I could have like bought every single skein in the collection. Um, but obviously we couldn't. Anyway, um, I bought this because, and I, I want to make with this, but I think I need another, I need another skein. I'm thinking maybe like a navy blue, maybe like a navy blue or a black or a navy blue, or maybe like a dark gray, like maybe a charcoal gray or a navy blue or black, one of those to finish, to complete it because I want to make the Soho Square from from Jackie I believe Jackie Rose the Soho Square and the pattern comes with three sizes there's one that's called the Soho Wink oh my god so cute so anyway it's really fun because you kind of design your own you know color palette and so I want to I want to use these three and get another one because I believe I mean I could do it with three colors but like the design is four colors and I'm still trying to decide, you know, which one I want it to be, like my full blown strong color. And um, this one's calling my attention. But anyway, I am excited to work on that and design that. But like I said, I, I need another another color to um to do it. And so I think that I was gonna order another skein in something like that from Sorella. Also, exploring knits. Was it exploring it or or coast to coast? One of them had this beautiful like navy, dark navy, and they have other ones. So I kind of was like kind of looking at everything. But guess what, you guys? I am going to Wool and Folk. I am so excited. It'll be my first time ever going. So as you guys know, I'm in New Jersey. And the weekend of October 20th, it is Rhinebeck weekend up here so basically there's tons of like fiber festivals going on that weekend so wool and folk is on friday rhinebeck is saturday and sunday and i'm going i'm not sure if i'm gonna end up going to rhinebeck but i'm definitely going to wool and folk i have my ticket already i'm gonna take the amtrak up and i'm just going for the day i'm only like on the train two hours away so it's perfect i can go hang out and then come back it's like from 12 to 7 so plenty of time and the coolest thing all these amazing vendors are gonna be there and tons of like companies that I follow that um dye yarn and project bags and do all these amazing things and I follow them on insta so I'm really really excited to be there and just kind of be able to see all the yarn in person and touch it and look at the colors um I'm really really excited to see Sorella yarn she's gonna be there um, oops, I I dropped one. So, yeah, I'm excited to see Sorella Yarn. I'm excited to see Explorer Knits. There's going to be so many. I I wonder if Coast to Coast is going to be there. I'm not sure. A Bullberry Fiber, hopefully. I don't know, but there's tons of, like, yarn companies that I love and that I'm excited for, well, you know, Wool and Folk because of that. I believe Sonder Yarn is going to be there also. And I want to get some, some DK Way from them. I cannot wait to go to that. That's going to be exciting. That's something that I'm looking forward to. And I have to decide what I'm going to wear that day. Maybe I wear my cinema sweater. It'll be done. Because basically it's Monday that I'll be done with this. And that Friday I have to go to the event. So maybe I'll wear my cinema sweater. That would be nice. So I'm excited to like you know, not only see all the yarn dyers, but like meet tons of like knitters that, 
you know, I've met on Insta and that'd be really fun. And just the experience itself, the venue that they selected is this gorgeous, gorgeous venue upstate in the Hudson. It's beautiful. That area is, is gorgeous. And it's all, the great thing is it's all indoors. I heard, I believe this is the third year that they do it or yeah, the third year. I, I heard that the previous years were outside and like, because we've been having terrible rain, you guys, like it's been nonstop raining. Like I think this week is the first week that is just gorgeous. Like every weekend has been pouring. And so because of that, the organizer decided to like move the venue to an indoor location because, you know, not only for the vendors and all their stuff, but also, you know, just in general for everyone to enjoy and have a good time. So I'm excited about that, that it's all indoors, but they're going to have outdoor stuff like the food trucks and, you know, and chairs and, 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 and other things also are going to be outside. So, you know, so if it's a beautiful day, it will be great, but I'm excited that it's indoor for sure. And like I said, I'm excited. It'll be my first experience and I'm looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are flying in for, from everywhere to go to Rhinebeck weekend. So, and like I said, I'll see, you know, if I decide to go to Rhinebeck, which I really want to go, I just heard it's really, really crowded and overwhelming um, and exhausting because it's so, so crowded, it's so big. Um, someone told me that Sunday is a better day. I'm not sure. But anyway, if I decide to go, I can, you know, I can make that decision last minute because I can drive there. I can go with my husband and just drive and, and, and go and hang out and spend the day and then drive back. Again, like I said, I'm only like two hours away. So it's a quick trip for me. I can drive there, spend a couple hours and come back. So it's not a big deal. So I can make that decision later on. So I'll see, you know, I'll see how I, how I feel when, you know, when it gets closer to that. If not, I'm fine just going with, um, to Wool and Folk. It'll have everything that I need and it's a smaller venue and I think I'll enjoy that much, much more. I think Rhinebeck definitely is on my list because it's an experience. You know, everyone that can should attend. I'm looking forward to that. I have a lot going on. I want to finish this test knit. I want to work on my whips. I am looking forward to wool and folk. Um, I have to get another skein for this so I can work on the Soho Square. And what else? What else? What else? I have to put together that video for you guys of my knitting inspiration and all my knitting plans and everything that I'm going to knit up for fall. And obviously winter is probably going to cross over, you know, because there's so many things that I want to knit. And obviously you can only knit so much. So a lot of the projects will probably cross over to winter, which is fine. I'm excited that we're in fall already. It's my favorite season. And the weather has been gorgeous. Aside from those weekends that have been like nonstop raining. We had like an insane like eight days of rain, which was insanity. And then now it's beautiful. It's sunny. It's like 50. So it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Today's a gorgeous day. Um, I'm getting some really great natural light for filming today. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for sticking around, for staying here, for watching. If you did stay all this time, you know, thank you for your support, for your comments, for your likes, for your shares. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like my content, turn on that bell so you don't miss any of my future content. And all of that helps my channel to, you know, keep being fed onto that homepage and, you know, build up a community. So thank you so much. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I try to post, you know, more frequently there of what I'm up to, what I'm making um, on my stories and stuff like that. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Happy knitting. Bye, guys.